Welcome to CP Newsroom. I'm Nicola Menzi. Research has shown over the last few years an increase in the number of atheists as well as an increase in the number of religiously unaffiliated Americans. How must Christians across all lines come together to remain relevant and authentic witnesses in an increasingly post-Christian America? Joining us to take a look at the issue is Dr. Tony Evans, Senior Pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and President of the Urban Alternative. Welcome, Dr. Evans. Good to be with you, Nicole. Thank you. All right. So you have young people dropping out of churches, uh, atheists being more outspoken. Um, it seems like you know, Christianity is on a decline in America. What are some things you think churches and Christians need to do to revitalize the faith maybe? Well, I think first of all is that we have to recognize that uh, this is not your mother's generation. I mean, this is a different generation. Technology has changed how people communicate, how people relate, the speed at which this takes place. To ignore that in the name of preaching the word is to forget that we're to preach the word to people. And therefore, you cannot ignore the people you're trying to reach uh, with the word you're trying to reach them with. Okay. So that means contextualizing the truth without compromising the truth so that young people hear us speaking to their issues, hear us speaking to their concerns, hear us speaking to what they're facing in their schools, which was different than when I was coming along, and where creation was uh, a normal option and where values clarification was, uh, was clear. We didn't need that much clarification. Right. Uh, so, but that's not the context in which the media is uh, impacting this next generation. Mm -hmm. So using the media, using technology, uh, using a relevancy and application of the truth of God's word is key to this generation seeing that the truth of God speaks to them today where they are. Okay, and you mentioned the youth, young people. Um, it seems they are increasingly engaged in social justice issues. Um, some churches maybe have a problem balancing you know, righteousness and justice issues. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the key word, Nicole, is balancing. Mm. The Bible balances the two. The Bible says that from God's throne comes righteousness and justice. Uh, Genesis 18, verse 19, uh, God tells Abraham, raise your children in righteousness and justice. Mm. So the two should never be pitted against each other, nor should they be in competition. Righteousness has to do with the vertical standard that God gives us to please him. Justice has to do with the horizontal expression of that righteous standard in the lives of others. Mm -hmm. So we are to, in justice, consistently apply God's moral law to others, while in righteousness, keeping the standard of that law. And you do both at the same time. You never have to choose between the two, because if you do, you'll have a divided church. If you emphasize righteousness, then you'll, you'll be like a lot of the Anglo churches that emphasize how we live before God. If you only emphasize justice, you'll be like a lot of minority churches that emphasize fairness and equity among men and how you're treated. And uh, one may give up justice and the other may give up righteousness when God gives up neither. Mm -hmm. So you have to use your word, balance the two consistently, ongoingly, because the two don't compete. They're the great complement of Scripture. Okay, and what about investing in future leaders? Do you see that a lot when you travel, that there are resources and attention given to that issue? Not nearly what it needs to be, Nicole. I mean, there is a great need for investment in leaders. In fact, that's one of the major tenets of our ministry, the Urban Alternative, is to invest in pastors through our Pastors Wives ministry, invest in Pastors Wives, and show them how to invest in their leaders, particularly the next generation of leaders. Churches need to be intentional about reaching the next generation by creating templates for young people to see that there is a stepping stone to leadership in this church. It does, you just don't luck into it. Mm -hmm. But that challenge creates uh, inspiration and opportunity. So a light touch on the shoulder and says, you have potential. Uh, why don't you go through this track? And uh, we're in the process of putting a track together through the Urban Alternative Health Church to do that. Okay. And what about um, some issues, difficult issues that divide churches and congregations, specifically on racial and cultural uh, insensitivity? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, are Christians, would you say, you know, all, um, all embracing of the other? Well, the beautiful thing about the body of Christ is God created it 
is that they would be the Jew and the Gentile. They would be in the church in Antioch at Acts 13, people from, from Africa as well as people from Jerusalem. And yet those bring tensions, Acts chapter 6, where the Greek-speaking uh, uh, Jew uh, women and the, the Hebrew-speaking women were at odds with one another. But that's where leadership comes in. Leadership has to recognize those differences, uh, meander through those differences, come up with divine solutions to those differences so that people can live in harmony harmony as we worship uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I often say in, in mayonnaise, mayonnaise is mainly oil and water, and oil and water will never get along. But uh, so you have to put an emulsifier in there, and that's egg. So you put egg, and egg grabs the oil, and egg grabs the water and keeps it together. Okay. Well, well, you know, people from different backgrounds may not have natural affinity, but when the Word of God is treated right and the Holy Spirit is allowed to engage, it can bring together things, people, backgrounds, history, racial races, colors, and cultures, and hold them together in a way that natural affinity may not be able to do. Mm, but what about uh, doctrinal issues? How do we get over those to work together? Well, the issue of doctrine is which doctrine are we talking about? There are certain non-negotiable doct doctrines, the authority of Scripture, the deity of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth, salvation by grace through faith. You know, those are non-negotiables. Now, different, different denominations may have different nuances of emphasis that differentiate them. But we must make a distinction between membership and fellowship. Mm -hmm. You can fellowship with people you can't have membership with. And so fellowship with all, be members of those who uh, hold the doctrinal distinctives that you hold dear. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Evans. Thank you. For your input on some issues that Christians have to tackle going forward. All right. And thank you for tuning in to CP Newsroom. See you next time.